Hey guys, Zoo Raid back at again with another video. Today I'm going to show you how to design and sketch a Arduino case, or really anything, in Google SketchUp. So, as you can see right here, I'm just building the bottom plate, which will hold the bottom of the Arduino, and protect all the connections from getting shorted out. Um, I'm going to put on the screen the little schematic that I drew before all this, and that really shows you the d exact dimensions um, the rough dimensions, I kind of screwed it up by accident, so, um, I had to cut out a lot of video because I went in and remeasured everything while I was building it in SketchUp. So, right here, I'm just putting in the measurements for the USB and the power connections. I had to make sure they were all evenly spaced. I had to make sure they were all evenly spaced because um, otherwise it wouldn't fit. So I'm making these 15, I made the USB connection 15 millimeters tall and the um, power connector 14.69 millimeters tall. and. This was just so um, it was to the exact size, so then later I could just uh, scale it up a little bit and everything would still fit. I put those um, measurements down in the real numbers so I could see that everything was matching up as it would on the Arduino board. And after it was, I moved on to the next step, which was um, making a square cutout for the... Um, Arduino pins. Here I got a little stuck with um, all the math and measurements. It wasn't coming out right. And then I realized, oh yeah, I was adding one millimeter to everything in a previous sketch. So I had to start all over and just build it to the exact dimensions. And then, like I said before, just scale it up a little bit. The reason why these boxes look so wide is because I'm including the lettering and all the words so you can read like the digital pin, digital pin one, digital pin two, and then like analog pins. So you can read all that so you know, you know you're putting a wire into the correct pin. Sometimes it's tricky to get a spot to actually pinpoint if it's not either an intersecting corner or an actual line. Um, you can't get the measurement to actually stick. So I was just eyeballing it there, um, lining it up, and then just recording it on my paper. You can see I did this several times just to make sure everything was to its scale. So when I do 3D print it eventually, um, everything would hopefully line up. If it doesn't, I mean, it's trial and error. This would be the first thing I would actually design and print. Um, if it doesn't, if it doesn't um, print exactly, you can always file stuff down. So that's how I'm, I'm really uh, thinking of it. If it doesn't fit, you just either use some sandpaper or file or whatever and make it fit. And then obviously you just learn from your mistake to make things a little bit bigger than they should. Here I have no idea what I was doing. I like raised these two blocks up 20 millimeters. Um, I guess so when I put the top on, I'd be able to still see where they came out. Um, it was kind of stupid because I ended up having to do more work than was needed. And I will still make you watch that. Okay, yeah, this these walls are, are uh, 16 millimeters high. 
I can definitely tell that because it's the wall is higher than the USB connection, which is 15 millimeters high um, from the bottom of the board. Now those holes do look bigger than a USB connection and a power connection, and that is because on the bottom of the board all the pins will stick out that are actually soldered to the board. They stick out the bottom, so I just gave that a little extra space um, so nothing would collide. I mean, when you're sticking the board into this case, um, it doesn't really matter if there's a little bit of space on either side because, I mean, it's still protected um, from shorts. So. As you can see right here, I had a lot more work than was needed um, taking out that big block that I constructed. And then I still had to fill that bottom hole. So, I mean, I, I have no idea why I did that. Um, still learning, obviously. I've only designed a couple things in SketchUp. Um, but other than that, I this was really just like a learning process, I guess you could say. And I figured why not record it and commentate over it and try to teach you something. Hopefully you guys are learning something from this. If not, there's other videos out there. There's nothing else I can say. And apparently by selecting something on one side, it will select through the entire object and the entire SketchUp sketch and just make sure you see everything that's selected if you're going to delete it because it might come back to uh, haunt you in the end and you're like, where's that line? And you just have no idea. So right here I am making the outer wall so when it gets 3D printed it's not um, one, or one layer thick. So I made it um, 2.5 millimeters thick each wall. I figured it's a case. It doesn't have to be that thick and this will definitely cut down on the printing time. So the, the printer that I was using, it was a MakerBot Replicator 2, and I think the resolution on that is like 0.1 millimeters. So that means each layer is 0.1 millimeters, then um, you have to do 25 layers to, to get the thickness of the wall. So it, it wouldn't really take that long, it just depends on the size of the object. And since the inside is hollow, the only thing the extruder would have to do is just go around in a box and then it just has to do that 25 times or so and uh, you'll get your thickness. I screwed up on um, doing the top. I, what I do is I extruded the top, but it just moved everything up. So um, by extruding it 2.5 millimeters, it would move um, it would move those lines up 2.5 meters or millimeters, which would throw off everything. So what I had to do was scrap that, go back, um, delete everything, and then go up on every single line 2.5 millimeters until it was all covered, and then I was pretty much done there. So this is how I have to have it, but it wouldn't do that. So I have to go up 2.5 millimeters on every every line. And then I kind of screwed up on that because that has to be empty. And it wouldn't just, it wouldn't cover up. So what I had to do was erase all of that again and just go out on the corners. And here's where... Google SketchUp gets a little tricky. Um, even though you're going like parallel in a straight line, you still have to have one on the uh, a marker on the base, and then you can um, snap over to that, and it will recognize that as you want to make a parallel line to that. There you go, and that turns into a face. So right here, I will almost be making one side. There it is, and then. As I zoom in it, you can see how, um, oh, 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 come on. You can see how it made it like that, and I had to go from the inside, but then I realized I could just delete the top portion and then just do it like that. So I was kind of inside the object 
in a very small area going through walls and stuff. But then I just realized I could select that and just delete it and then continue as what I was doing. So there we go, and then I just delete those. Oh, what did I do? I was trying to ext extrude it, but then I realized that I deleted the bottom by accident. Oh, yep, no bottom. And then I just uh, controlled Z, went back up, deleted that. Now we have to do the fun part, which is the bottom. Before, when I was um, trying to do it a different way with the extruder, I extruded everything, and it like reversed the box. I don't know how it happened, but as you can see right there, it was very simple to do that. So I had to now cut it in half because you obviously can't 3D print the top um, because it wouldn't be able to print in air. It needs a platform or some kind of base to adhere to. So I'm just cutting it in half right now. That line was a mistake in the middle. It's not centered. I think it would still have been okay, but I I went I think I went back and got it. It's such a pain in the butt because you have to cut on the inside as well. So I mean, if you have multiple things inside here and it's a relatively small space, you're gonna have some trouble. I'm so glad I, I measured it up. See how it, it wasn't, it's not straight. So what I did was I extended the line over there and just had to delete every other line that was in this center piece right here, which was good because otherwise it probably wouldn't have matched up and then I would have been screwed. So yay to seeing that. And then I selected the top, copied it because before when I would just drag stuff apart, it would get all screwed up. So I copied it. And then went back and got the bottom half. Made sure everything was selected. Copied that. Pasted that next to it. And then I rotated the wrong part. <laughs> realized that. Selected the part I needed to. And then um, rotated that and put it next to the other half. So that's what will come out on the 3D printer. The only thing I have to do now is just make a hinge system for the back so you can you're able to clamp it on so anything else if you have any questions just let me know and thanks for watching